This week at the Net Cafe, games online. Want to play an RPG on the web? This is the new EverQuest from Sony. It's as good as it gets online. Meet Issa Stamos, the producer of Berserk's newest online game, What's the Big Idea? It's a TV game show on the net. Bill Gates does it. Warren Buffett does it. Why don't you do it? Play Bridge online at okbridge.com. This is Alana Gilbert. She says Twitch games aren't just for guys. She started a website called girlgamer.com. And if you just want some cool, simple games online, check out the Shock Rave website. Games on the web, this week at the Net Cafe. Net Cafe is made possible by rondiamond.com, the oldies site on the internet. Music and memories from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, not just another jukebox. Additional support comes from the law offices of Ivan Hoffman, lawyering with integrity for internet law, copyright, trademark, and other intellectual property law. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. Hi, and welcome to the Net Cafe. One of the most popular social uses of the internet is playing games online. In fact, it's estimated there are now four million people regularly playing online games, and the revenues associated with online game sites is approaching a billion dollars a year. So this is very real stuff. Now, a logical area for game playing online is the RPG, or role-playing game, or adventure game. And the newest entry in this field is really breaking new ground. It's called EverQuest, and Jane has the details. Don, we're talking about the latest brainchild from Sony. It's called EverQuest. Now, this is a role-playing game. It's online. Now, not being a gamer, <laughs> walk me through exactly what is a role-playing game. I think I've got an idea, but what's, what's unique about this? Um, you basically take the role of a character and immerse yourself in a beautiful 3D world with thousands of other players online interacting. So now EverQuest is, is this 3D world that you're talking about, this, this big expansive experience that's 3D. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the history behind these role-playing games? I thought of things like Dungeons and Dragons. Right? Um, yeah, what we've done is we've basically taken the old text, uh, the old paper and pen Dungeons and Dragons and uh, brought it to the future of uh, internet and future interactive um, environment. You could get online with thousands of other players rather than sit at a board, uh, a desk with a map, and you're online immersing yourself in a world, uh, chatting, talking, helping out other players. So I've got thousands of different people that I can play with. I get into this world. Describe the EverQuest world a little bit. It's a huge world. It would take you anywhere from six to eight hours in real time to walk across. Uh, you have to take some boats to a few islands and continents. You have to swim to a few places that you'd like to go to. So it's a massive world with um, Arctic scenes and desert scenes and city landscapes and uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I navigate myself around her. I pick a character. I've got a choice of, of different characters that I can pick from. Yeah, 12 different characters um, with uh, 14 different classes, if you will. Um, so you could be a human, or you could be an elf, or a dwarf, or a barbarian. Um, you could be a fighter, a healer, uh, a magician. Uh, we give you quite a few options to play this game. And so what's the element of the game? I mean, what do I do once I get in the world? I've picked my character. Um, you basically live, breathe, and die in this world. You have to get food. You have to get drink. Um, if you're a, fi a hunter, you have to kill things and go sell. If you kill a bear, you have to sell its skin to get gold. Uh, and so on. It, you basically live and breathe in this world. Now, am I playing against players, or am I playing against the, the environment itself? No, it's a itself, very cooperative, uh, team-oriented game. You need uh, friends to help you out. If I'm a, if I'm a fighter and you're a cleric, um, you can heal me after a big war that we've just went to. Or if we want to go fight a dragon or a, a large monster, we need friends because I couldn't take it on myself. And experience, you, you get experience points as you get up, so we would want to get experience together and uh, go adventure. So the, the, the more people you play with, you start to pick some people to play with Absolutely. and, and kind of group together. It's almost like a gang war kind of uh, going you, on a little can. bit. You can. We will have guilds, if you will, where you uh, have your group of friends you're, and you go out every night and you either kill other humans or other guilds, if you will, um, or you go out and party and team up and kill large uh, monsters and get points. Now, can I, wa I can walk in and out of the game whenever I want, is that right? Absolutely. You can walk in, you can get out of the game, and when you're out of the game, the world continues. It rains, it's So people sunny. are in there all the time. Absolutely. So, what, what do I have to do? Do I have to kind of hide myself away? No, you, you basically just camp out. Uh, you just camp out, and wherever your body last left, you come right back in whenever you choose. Now, there are other online 
role-playing games out there. What makes EverQuest different from the others? Um, EverQuest uh, is a full 3D environment, a very beautiful environment with many landscapes, a huge world, as I said, uh, 68 hours. So the graphics hours. are rich. Graphics the experience is good. Graphics are phenomenal, absolutely. Don, how do you get started playing EverQuest? Uh, you'd go to your local retailer, and it's a CD-ROM based game, so you'd buy the game at your retailer, and then you'd have to pay a monthly subscription to the game because it is an online only So title. I log into www.everquest.com, get service. the monthly subscription, yep. and then I'm rocking and you're, rolling. You're good to go. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Don. Sure. Well, the people who brought you You Don't Know Jack, one of the most popular online games, have a new one now called What's the Big Idea? And uh, I see you are the uh, producer of the, of the site, is that it? That's correct. This is the uh, original. You Don't Know Jack started out as a PC game, right? Uh, that's right, software. on the CD-ROM. And then you turned it into an online game. That's right. And you figured, hey, we're onto a good thing. And then came Acrophobia, which was next. Mm -hmm. And now What's the Big Idea? That's right. And what's the story of The Big Idea? What's the game about? Uh, well, what's the big idea is a multiplayer game where you can play with a hundred other people at the same time, uh -huh. and you answer questions with no right or wrong answer. Such as? Such as, uh, what's your favorite kind of M&M, plain or peanut? Okay, so the object is not to get a right answer, but to, to do what? I mean, how do you win? Trying to win? figure out how everybody else in the game room with you at that time is going to answer that question. So the object is to guess not what your opinion may be, but what you think the majority opinion may be? Right. And if you do that, you'll actually be able to move ahead. And by moving ahead in the game, you can get points or lose right. points or... Which is what's interesting about the game, because you're never quite sure what you're doing. You know, should I give my opinion? Should I give what other people right. I think... Or do I think, should I vote like I think they'll vote because they think right. that's what I want to vote on? And sometimes you just get caught up in watching how other people exactly. are going to answer and you forget to answer the yeah. question. And you sort of have to get a feel for who these people are and like what, what their thought, that's right. thoughts may be and what their so. attitudes may be. And, and even if the same question comes up in one game, You'll be playing with a totally different group of people the yeah. next time you play. Now explain the graphic element. What's cool about what's the big idea is you actually see the pyramid. You have an avatar representing your character and the other characters. Right. Explain the visual part of it. Well, there is a very colorful pyramid with all different kinds of steps, good ones, bad ones. Right. And you are you a climb tiny the guy and you're trying to climb the pyramid with a, about 100 other people. And every time you get points, you see yourself go up that pyramid. That's right. right. Now, as you said, there are some bad steps. I mean, you've, you've thrown sort of random elements in here, right? Right. Where it's like Monopoly. If you land on the wrong level, you get kicked back a bit. Right. For instance, there's a sticky step where right. you can't advance unless you get two or three step okay. question. Or what else? Uh, or a black hole, which actually brings you all the way back to the start, which okay. is probably the worst step. Right. Now, you also have, what, ion storms or tornadoes that come yeah. through or something? Yeah. Yeah. Periodically, sometimes through the game, you'll experience storms. You can buy insurance if you want. That's right. With right. your IQ points. But the storm can, like, blow you off your level and lower down on the right. pyramid. Right. Or you can lose points from a storm, too. Yeah. Now, let me ask you about the commercials in all your Berserk games. I mean, that's, this is really television. When I'm, I'm playing one of your games, I feel like I'm watching TV. You play for a while, we'll be back in a minute, and here are the, not banner ads, but these full spots go by. Right. Is television really the model for you guys? Yeah, it seems to be a working, too, because the people who are playing the game sometimes need a break. Right. And it's very entertaining, and it doesn't really take you out of your game experience because it's full video. Right. And sound. Well, what's the secret? How do you guys do it? I mean, it, it, it's just full animation, full vid audio, video. I mean, it just it looks like TV. Right. Actually, all of that is downloading in the background while you play. That's the secret. Okay. Okay. So you're you're storing up that commercial to get That's ready right. for it. So it's playing off my computer, in fact. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. What else about what's the big idea? Now you have, as you say, up to 100 people, but you don't have a live chat like you did in Acrophobia, do you? We have a chat lobby, uh -huh. so you can chat with the other players, but while not in the game. Um, once you're in the game, you're, you're just in the game and you can't chat with the other players, uh, so there's no cheating and things like that. There's okay. also chat in the lobby and message So you can meet boards. people, but not while you're playing the exactly. game. Exactly. All right, what's happening next from Berserk? you have another game coming? Yeah, actually we have a follow-up to Acrophobia yeah. specifically, which is called Get the Picture. Okay, kind of and a graphic acrophobia? Right, where you're presented with a picture or a cartoon and you're supposed uh -huh. to create a witty and fun uh, caption to the picture. So it's very much like Acrophobia. It'll have slightly different rules. Okay, so create a funny caption for the picture right. rather than just create a funny uh, phrase for the, the acronym. Right, that's actually. right. All right, but the key for all these games is uh, go to berserk.com mm -hmm. and have fun. Uh -huh. Thank you, Ison. Sure.
Online games generally have been the domain of guys, but more and more girls are going online to play games. In fact, even the traditionally male-dominated first-person shoot-'em-up games like Quake. Jane is with one avid girl gamer who is also a columnist for a site called Girl Gamers. Alana, around here it's a well-known thing that I'm not much of a games person. And, I, you know, I tried playing Quake once and I got so nauseous after the first two minutes yeah. so I just had to say, enough, I gotta yeah. stop. So I really never thought that these kind of Twitch games like Quake were things that a lot of uh, chicks like to do. Yeah. But you're proving me wrong. You've got a website called www.girlgamer.com. Girl and, yeah. and you're a, a writer on staff with, yeah. with that website. Tell me a little bit about, you know, what's, it must be a fairly small community of women that, that like to play games like this or? Yeah, very, well, it's a small community compared to the men, you know, involved in gaming. Right. Um, yeah, very, very small. Um, but, you know, every day, you know, we have more and more email, you know, coming in saying, you know, we didn't know, and you know, I, I, my boyfriend was away, and I played these games, and I love them. Like, yeah, yeah. You don't want to tell anybody, you know. Yeah, you exactly. actually like playing yeah. the shoot 'em up oh, yeah. games. Oh yeah, and a lot of women, uh, actually younger women who, you know, the high school set who start going to the arcades now and actually like playing the games instead of just you know hanging right, they're around. They're starting to get into it now. When I think oh, yeah. about the, the kind of games that I like are usually trivia games mm -hmm. and, and, and strategy games and those types of things. Oh, yeah. um, so, so are you finding that women kind of do in general prefer those kind of games or? or, or a lot of women do. Um, you see it um, a lot in, uh, well, college, in the college scene, you know, you get a lot of women who, you know, Prefer like those types like of the trivia, yeah. Type or I think of games a quest. Puzzle, I mean, yeah. is another one that's oh, yeah, kind of yeah. more feminine in, in the nature. Now, yeah. so so let's move over to those shoot 'em up, bang 'em up, you know, Twitch types the Twitch, games yeah. that do require some coordination with at least, you know, yeah. some digits. <laughs> What what's the experience on on being a female announcing, hey, I'm uh, you know Susie coming into the the Quake game? What happens when you do that? I mean, do you want to say you're a guy or? Yeah. I'll, um, most women who started playing, you know, like the Twitch games, right. like Quake and stuff. I mean, it was all, it was totally male dominated. So we'd use male names and only recently, you know, are women just instantly going online and just using their female name because um, there were a lot of women out there, you know, kind of paved the way because we just got so much harassment, you know, from men. You so know, you get a flaming our, email saying, what are oh, you doing yeah, here? Or? Yeah. Like, you know, death threats. I mean, things like that. We're, really angry. No, no. I mean, really angry, you know, just foaming at the mouth, you know, guys who are just like, you know, this is, this is, you know, video games are for men. Yeah. Women shouldn't even play them. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you just take them as they come, but they're coming, you know, far. So, you now, know. one of the things that you did do is you banded together in a, in a clan. Yeah. You've yeah. got an all-girl clan or an all-woman clan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, what is it called? Clan PMS. Clan PMS. Yeah, the Psycho <laughs> Men Slayers. Yeah. So, now, what, are you winning? Are you beating them? Are you proving yeah, them Yeah, actually, wrong? Um, uh, we get a lot of uh, challenges from male clans, and, you know, a lot of them come, you know, they write us emails saying that, you know, you're just a bunch of girls and we'll kick your butts. And <laughs> so we're like, you know, hey, we'll give you're you the chance. the chance. Yeah, and actually, um, I would say about 95% of the clans who challenge us in that, fashion you know they usually get beaten and they get angry Badly. and oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, not not all of them but a few of them say well oh you know my connection was lost right and all this, right you know, it must have excuses. been a problem with yeah. my configuration yeah. or something yeah. like yeah. that but no doubt oh yeah, yeah but a lot of them are really you know generous you know they they are like you you're good players. You so know, now we, they're they're kind of calming down a bit. So now, oh yeah, when, when oh folks, yeah. if, if if you're interested, if you're female and you want to learn about online gaming, kind of find some other women that like to do yeah. that as well. Find girlgamer.com is yeah. the place to go. G R R L. Yeah. Girlgamer.com. Girl Girl yeah. There's lots yeah. of great stuff. Thanks so much for coming, Alana. Yeah, no problem. Many of the online games are based on computer software games, but some of the more successful game sites, in fact, are based on the traditional board and card games that we all play at home. And one of the most successful in that genre is Bridge. And this is your idea. You run OKBridge.com, Matt. And tell us how you got the idea to start a bridge game online. Well, I learned how to play bridge in college, yeah. and then I went to live in Finland for a year with my future wife. I heard about you had time the on your hands. I had time on my hands. <laughs> okay. I'd heard about the internet. I thought it might be cool to write a little bridge program to play bridge with my friends back in the States. And when was this? That was 1990. 
1990. That's Nobody right. even heard of the internet among normal people <laughs> right. in 1990. Nor of Yahoo or, or Netscape. So uh, even way back then, you would actually you were playing bridge with friends back in the states and, and on the net. That's right. All right. Uh, now, now today, if why would a person want to play bridge online right now? I mean, that's a social game. I mean, that's the whole point. Sit around a table and do that. What's the advantage of playing on the website? Well, you can uh, play anytime you want. You can always find so 24 hours a day, seven hours days a week. A is up. That's right. You can always find four other people to play. Uh -huh. um, you can play with people from around the world. Um, we have a very good selection of players. We have the best players in the world, really. Now, let me ask you about that, because I had heard yeah. you've got really some top-notch players who right. actually play at OK Bridge. That's right. Like who? Well, we've got uh, Warren Buffett, the well-known financier. I I've heard Bill Gates and Buffett have played online. So I've heard, okay. right. And we have many national and world champions that are also our members. Now, that scares me a little bit because, I mean, I'm just sort of a duffer bridge player, and I'm worried sure. I'm going to get in this game with these guys who are like experts, and I'm going to get yep. creamed, and they're going to get annoyed with me and so on. Can I find my skill level? Oh, yeah. We have players of all levels, and you can, uh, you can easily find a game with people who are at your level. And how does it actually work? I mean, I go onto the website, and I do what if I want to play a game? Um, well, you need to download and install our software, okay. set up a free 30-day guest account. Okay. Um, then you uh, start the software and sign in, and um, then you'll see a listing of tables, and you can go to one of the tables. And uh, So the metaphor is I just walk over to an empty table or an empty seat at a table, and I sign up, and when four guys get there, exactly. they play again. What are the dynamics of playing the game online? You know, bridge is, you know, you sort of look at each other, and there's a right. lot of talking and kibitzing, there's sort of psychology there. Does right. the game change when you're playing it in the sort of more neutral environment of the net? Oh, it does, but it still retains a very social aspect. In fact, we know of several uh, marriages that have occurred from people. Oh, really? So, online. I mean, you, you can kibitz and chat online while you're playing? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Can you go on and sort of lurk and just watch a game on your website? Yes, we have. Because that's what I would want to do that. first to right. sort of see how it works. <laughs> yep. In fact, you'll see um, some of the uh, top players, you'll find 50 people kibitzing them at a time. Wow. So that's. <laughs> A lot of people now like how does the money part work you said you go on right. you get a 30-day free guest pass so I assume right. after that you've got to pay to become a member of this or something that's right so we charge an <laughs> annual membership fee of $99 and that allows you to play an unlimited amount for one year okay now do you can you uh, do people play for money at all on this I mean do you have or do you have tournaments I mean are there competitions um, we have uh, quite a number of competitions and in fact next year we'll be running the world championships of internet bridge Oh, really? Right, which we think will be quite a big event. And in, we've got the American Contract Bridge League and the World Bridge Federation as sponsors of the event. So mm. we think it'll be quite big. But, but when people play, I mean, they sort of play for the, the intellectual thrill of beating the other guy there. I mean, That's so right. There's no money at stake. There, there's no money at stake, except you're making just money, honor. I, <laughs> I assume, running the website. Right. All right, sounds like a lot of fun. And it yeah. is okbridge.com. That's right. Matt, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Most online games are cyber versions of the complex games you might play on a PC or the board games or card games you might play at home. But there's one site that specializes in very simple little games and puzzles, the kinds of things you might find in the daily newspaper, but the similarity ends there. Jane is with the producer of ShockRave.com. Pete, the last time you and I got together, we were talking about online comedy. Now you've moved over to Macromedia, and you're managing the new websites, www.shockrave.com, yep. not to be confused with the plug-in Shockwave, mm -hmm. uh, which is what you're profiling at the website. What, what, are some of the, what was sort of the objective behind the whole experience? Well, the, the, the idea when we started off the site was to give uh, get all of the best of the Shockwave games and activities that were being created and shown up on small websites all over the place to bring them into one area so that people can really see what, what had been going on and showcase the best of what had been done around the world. Uh, much to our surprise and happiness, it turned out that it was more than just a showcase site. It was actually a viable entertainment site. We're getting uh, around 500,000 page views every day. It's a lot of fun. I, I mean, I just couldn't stop wanting to explore sort of the next thing. Now, we're talking about games, and, mm -hmm. and you've got quite a, quite a wide selection of games yes, that you've got there. There's over 200 uh, different pieces of content on the site altogether. Now, the big point here, though, is that these games are not meant to try to compete with sort of CD-ROM-based games mm -hmm. and those types of mm -hmm. things. Well, these are really sort of very quick, 
Yeah, the idea is that you're that you're at, at your job and you need a break, or you're at home and you're tired of uh, doing the spreadsheets after the hours grind. And, the, and the old grind. And you get there and you say, well, I need 10, 15 minutes, a half an hour. I'm just going to take a break. I'm going to play a quick and easy game, or I'm going to look, look at some animations. And so, what are the most popular games that you've got? Uh, the most popular games tend to be things that people already know, so there's no learning curve. Right. They start off. They'll play uh, the the bowling game, the pool game, golf game. Uh, S sports activities, different puzzles, uh, different yeah, versions of I have to tell you, actually, I, I got uh -huh. a little addicted. Uh -oh, I, I uh -oh. got to the jigsaw That's puzzles. That's the idea. <laughs> and I, I don't know if I was the only one out there, but I couldn't, I couldn't remove myself. This mm -hmm. whole Gone with the Wind game was just driving me crazy. Yeah, it's one of our more, more popular areas. It's, and again, it's because something people understand and they can uh, translate that experience into something they do in real life. So you're not just doing games, though. I mean, there's lots of other elements of this website. Mm -hmm. You've got the, the music area, and you've got quite a lot of things that you can do there. I, I thought it was really interesting. You had mixers, mm -hmm. um, so you sort of interactive mixing music and that type of thing. The, the one I thought was most curious was I went to the Big Bad Voodoo Daddy mm -hmm. uh, swing music dance area. Club, yeah. Right. So you're capitalizing on the, on the swing movement going mm -hmm. on there, but there's some different things happening here. It's not just downloading the, the sound. Yeah, so you're not just listening to a sound file. You're actually participating. You're getting out and playing with little dance movements that you can click and drag little characters around. So I was actually and, uh, walking into sort of a dance mm -hmm, hall. I mm -hmm. was not only watching the Big Bad Voodoo Daddies, which mm -hmm. is a band playing, but right. I can move things around. So you pick the song you want to listen to, you pick the uh, graphics you want to look at the background, and you select how you want to move your dancers. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was a cool thing. So it was sort of the next online videos. Mm -hmm. Why watch MTV when you can go when online? You can actually do stuff with it, yeah. Now, one of the other areas, which I thought was also a, kind of an interesting shift, and not one I expected from Macromind, mm -hmm. Uh, was that you've got this, this sort of uh, relationships with mm -hmm. Comedy Central, with Dilbert. Yeah, with a lot of the uh, newspaper syndicates. Syndicate What's the idea and, there? Well, the idea at first was to, again, show what the technology can do, to show that the, uh, the flash technology can do give you a, a better, uh, as good as or a better experience than watching animation on television. And we thought, what better way to do this than to get some of the more popular names in both television animation, also syndicated comics. So that's where we get uh, South Park, Dilbert, now Bizarro, and Dr. Katz. There's a lot of fun stuff there. Now, one important thing to remember is when you go to shockrave.com, you do need to download the Shockwave plugins, and depending on what you try to yeah, do, you got to... Yeah, some people may already have it, because the plugins do come with uh, all the newer, newer browsers. And uh, we have ways to tell if you have the plugin or if you don't. Yeah, it was so it's pretty, really a pretty, pretty painless intuitive. experience. Yeah. yeah, it's a great site, a lot of fun. And check it out, www.shockrave.com. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Pete. Thanks. And we wrap up, as usual, with our resident internet expert, Larry Maggot, syndicated columnist for the LA Times. Larry, we're talking about games online here, obviously, and I was wondering, are you into this stuff or your son? My, my son, Will, is definitely into it. My daughter's into it just a little bit, and I tolerate it because it's part of my family. But it's impressive use of technology, There's isn't no it? question that these game companies have managed to have action, animation, sound, incredible graphics, that it's all seemingly coming across a 28.8 modem. Now, in right. reality, it's running in the PC, but they've really done a great job. Uh, what about the addictive nature of playing games online? Does your, I mean, you, you know, when you see one, two, three in the morning, people are sort of still it's stuck It's a serious in problem stuff. for kids and adults. I mean, people really get into it. Now, there's, there's a lot of entertainment, a lot of socialization going on. People are chatting right. back and forth. So there's some valuable interaction going on, but it's very possible uh, to get addicted, and you really have yeah. to watch that. What about the girl issue? You know we have the woman from Girl Gamers here, and one hears, I mean, she was talking about more and more girls playing games online. We hear more and more women are online in yeah. general. Is the sex thing kind of evening out on the net? It, Do you have data to support it, Clearly that? there's data that sex thing is evening out on the net. Shopping, uh, communication, yeah. women are flocking to the internet. It's not quite 50-50, but it's moving in that direction. As far as games are concerned, they're still very boy-oriented. Right. Uh, women are beginning to feel more and more comfortable, uh, and there's some great games uh, where, where a little more intellectual right. uh, that, that women are starting to play, and uh, it's, been, it's not yet even. Real quick, what about the sort of sexist issue, you know, the Lara Croft, Tomb Raider yeah. kind of image? Is that sexist, or is it just the same old entertainment you'd find anywhere else? The answer is yes, yes. You go to any <laughs> video arcade, and you're going to see very, very sexist imagery. And the computer Sex is and no violence different. and young guys. Absolutely. It doesn't change. Larry, thank you very My much. My pleasure. All right. That's our look at online gaming and our visit to the Net Cafe for this week. We'll see you here next time. Net Cafe is made possible by rondiamond.com, the oldies site on the Internet. Music and memories from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, not just another jukebox. 
Additional support comes from the law offices of Ivan Hoffman, lawyering with integrity for internet law, copyright, trademark, and other intellectual property law. And by TechWeb for up-to-the-minute technology news. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic.